Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew coming to you from beautiful Costa Rica. Today's topic is going to be what the narcissist expects of you. Think about that for a minute. Guys, if you like the content, please subscribe. So the narcissist, you are in a narcissistic relationship or you were in a narcissistic relationship. And let's be real, the expectations in these relationships are sky high. These are so Let's say they're unattainable and you don't know it before you're entering these relationships, but if you're on the channel, and again, thank you very much for being here, you now understand that these expectations for you and your performance and what you're supposed to be doing, they never end. And it's a matter of what have you done for me lately in any narcissistic relationship. Remember, the narcissist will not look backwards and say, what a great job you did. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate you. I respect you. I love you. Things like that. No, they're in a constant state of what have you done for me lately? And in this capacity for this video, the expectations of the narcissist for you, past, present, and hopefully not future, they are never gonna be attainable, meaning the narcissist wants your resources, like I mentioned frequently on the channel, but their expectations for you are to give to a fault and to donate your time, your money, your energy, everything you can. They want you essentially to drop your life put your life on hold and or pause or freeze it so you can live their life and be their servant and be their pool, pool boy, their errand boy, their chauffeur, the person who pays their bills, the person who does everything for the narcissist. Why? Because the narcissist needs to extract resources from people. That's how they live. They go from person to person, blowing up relationships, jumping on the next person's resources and or assets to take from. And that's why exactly the narcissist doesn't have any long, many long-term friends. Their family members disappear over time. They catch on, they wise up. And their romantic relationships, let's be real, these people have many of them, whether they're in front of you or behind you, meaning they have many sources of supply. Whether you're married to them or not, it doesn't really matter. The marriage certificate is just a license to abuse in the narcissistic relationship. Having said that, the expectations of the narcissist for you were literally for you to be there to maybe do their laundry, to pick up the kids, to pay the bills, to plan vacations, to tolerate their poor behavior, to turn a blind eye or, or to turn the other cheek when perhaps you experienced a rage fit for the 100th time, to, in general public, to out in the public, put on your game face and make it seem like, yes, this relationship is absolutely magical, it's beautiful, I would rather be nowhere, when in fact, when you get home behind closed doors, you're given the silent treatment and you're stonewalled, and you're gaslit, and you're invalidated, and you're, you're just not living your best life because you're being abused. However, you don't know you're being abused. It's not until you find my channel and many others that you get the education, and that you put your experience with the education together, and combined, this gets what? That's right, it's wisdom. And that's when you can actually say, oh my goodness, I was in a toxic relationship. I didn't even know what narcissism was. Now I have firsthand experience, I lived it. Maybe I'm living it right now. Maybe you're looking for an exit plan. But the expectations of the narcissist for you, they really want you to do everything that they ask you to do, which means pay attention to them when they didn't get supply from, from work that day or from another source of supply. Let's, let's say hypothetically you are, you're relaxing. You're, you're just living your life. It's a day off from work and you have downtime and you can recharge your battery because the narcissist has work that day. Do you think they're going to let you have a peaceful day? Absolutely not. They're gonna try and disrupt your day. Why? Because maybe this narcissist is a workplace bully narcissist and they wanna ruin your vacation or your weekend or your holiday or that special event or maybe your birthday, whatever. But the narcissist expects you to do what they want when they want and in a rapid fashion. Remember, when you're texting the narcissist, think about this one. When you're texting them, do they reply to you quickly? Absolutely not. Unless it pertains to them and or benefits them. <coughs> Excuse me. If, the, if it benefits them, like if, you, if you're doing something for them and they, they know you're doing it, of course they're gonna get back to you quickly. But if you're calling them out or if you're saying something like, hey, I'm gonna be late or whatever, are they gonna text you back? No, they're not. Or maybe they'll blame shift you saying, why are you late? You should have left earlier. You see, you can't win with a narcissist. You may think you can win, but when you're in the relationship, you doubt yourself because, why? Because no matter which way you turn, the narcissist is always flipping the script. Again, they're expecting you to tolerate their poor behavior. They're expecting you to actually cower 
and to just listen to the false narrative that the narcissist has. This is why many times when you're in the narcissistic relationship, you lose your identity because you have given so much to this person and you've believed in the relationship so deeply that you, you lose your sense of self. And when you lose your sense of self, it's a long road to get yourself back. Trust me when I say it, but you will do so in time, in your time. And then when this happens, when you find yourself again, when you discover yourself, when you come through the fire post-narcissistic relationship, that's when the expectations from the narcissist are literally zero. Why? Because number one, you're out of the relationship, but number two, you now see the facade, the house of cards, the mask that the narcissist wore, and probably that they're wearing right now with a different individual. The whole point of this is the expectations when you're in the relationship, it, it's always moving goalposts. You're always thinking, okay, I did this and this, and all I have to do is that and that, and then maybe I get a breadcrumb of, of, of goodness, right? That's what you're thinking, and it happens. But the longer the relationship carries on, the less breadcrumbs you get. Unless, of course, you, hit, you get a windfall, and you, let's say you come into some money or something. Well, then the good times are about to start all over again, aren't they? Why? That's right, because the narcissist knows you have money, which is the number one thing they like. They like money. Money makes them happy, not you, not what you've done for them in the past X number of years or relationship. It's money and anything you can do to make their life easier. Example, you're in the narcissistic relationship and you just came back from the store, you bought a whole bunch of food, you got everything you're supposed to get and then some, but you know what? You bought the wrong loaf of bread. No one's gonna eat that bread, no one likes that bread. You need to now go back and get the right loaf of bread. Maybe it was multigrain when it was supposed to be whole wheat, whatever. Example. See, that's how they make you feel bad because maybe you just spent an hour and a half at the store getting supplies for the whole family and you got one item that was incorrect. However, you over, you, you bought a whole bunch of things. But you see, the expectations were there for you to be flawless, for you to do everything perfect. And even though that list that you had was absolutely executed to a T, there's always something, isn't there? There just is always something in these narcissistic relationships. That's why, again, when you lose your sense of self, you lose your identity in these relationships because you're working so hard to maintain peace in the relationship and you don't want to speak up because if you do, you're going to rock the boat. And if you rock the boat, maybe you're not going to be spoken to for a weekend or maybe the person will ghost you or act like you don't even exist. How's that? These things go on and on. And the narcissist, their expectations for you, they reach a, an insurmountable period. The longer the relationship goes on, the expectations get higher and higher. Example, workplace. You, you, the year one, you're working for the narcissist and you did your, you met all your qualifications and expectations and you did a great job. But next year, the, that person's gonna dump the work of two people on, on your lap or maybe even more because they know you can do it. And the whole time they're doing that in year two, are they making your life easier? No, they're berating you and belittling you for underperforming. How come you can't do this? You did it last year, what's going on? Why, why can't you? And your, your head is spinning, you're like, what are you talking about? Like, I just did all this work last year I, I performed at a high level, you know it. I was the employee of the month five months in a row. I didn't get a pay raise. You gave me twice the workload this year. And what do you want me to do? Like, I'm working. But you know what? See, the narcissist can't have peace. They can't have tranquility. They need chaos and disruption. And they need to put themselves high on the pedestal and to put you way down below, having you doubt in yourself, having you not believe in yourself, having you question yourself, having you lose your sense of self. And the expectations are always getting higher and higher. It's, it's as if this year, vacation, say you went to Tahiti. Well, next year, you're supposed to go to Rome. The year after that, you're supposed to go to the Cayman Islands and, and on and on. It, it, you can't go backwards in the narcissistic relationship. It's always having to achieve more than you did the last time, whatever that was. Maybe it was last yesterday, last week, last year, last birthday, last Christmas, whatever it was. But these expectations eventually reach a boiling point when you have actually no more resources. Maybe you're injured and you can't perform at work or maybe you're, you have no more money and what do you do with that in that case with the, when you have no money with the narcissist that's right let's time let's let's pull out the credit card let's go in credit card debt I'm sure we've all been there before from the narcissist and the narcissistic abuse financial abuse that they instill on people right but does the narcissist narcissist have credit card debt probably not these are all all all, all truth all uh, truisms meaning you're expected to do everything for the narcissist. That's the message for this video. And you're expected to not do much for yourself. The bare bones minimum, meaning your time, everything you possess is supposed to be devoted on the narcissist. Another example, if you're supposed to pick the narcissist up from work or something like that, 
you better be on time. And if you're on time, what's going to happen? That's right, they're going to make you wait. However, if you're late to pick them up, they're going to berate you because they were ready 15 minutes earlier. And guess what? You should have known that. You see, those are expectations. You're supposed to be a mind reader. You're supposed to be inside the mind of the narcissist and understand the next move or the next expectation that they have for you, which is impossible. Nobody can do that. No one knows what's going to happen. But the narcissist is always doing this to keep you off balance, to, to keep you working for them, and to keep you doubting yourself. If I'm early, is it going to be good? Uh, uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. And you're early, you end up waiting an hour because they're trying to make you wait. And if you're late, they're going to give you a hard time because you're supposed to be early. Because you're supposed to be expecting to be waiting for me. That's exactly how they look at things. Guys, I hope you get the message. The expectations of the narcissist that they had in your relationship and or they are having them right now, there are so many of them, but it all boils down to one thing. They want to make their lives easier, to make you squirm, to make you pay the price for even existing on the planet while they enjoy whatever they enjoy, if that's even possible. Guys, I hope you liked the video. I loved it. I loved doing it from beautiful Costa Rica. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon. Stay true. Stay blessed. Continue to become awakened and aware and understand you are the priority. No matter where you are on the planet, I love you. God bless you. You are not alone. Remember, post-narcissistic relationship, the expectations for yourself are from yourself. They're not from anybody else. No longer do people tell you what to do, where to do it, with whom to do it. No longer do people absorb your resources. All of your time, energy, money, love, effort, empathy goes into yourself. And when your cup is full, you can give back to the community and or those trusted loved ones around you. But when you understand that you are the priority, you always have been, and that an insurmountable amount of expectations were put on you from a toxic individual who turned out to be the narcissist, that's when you get the message. That's when you understand that you are beautiful, you are loved, and you are absolutely amazing. God bless you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great evening. Oh. And I expect you like the video. Thank you.